Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back for Hunter Tuned. Uh, today I'm working on a car at a shop I used to work at. I am actually going there because they asked me to come back. Uh, they let me go and then they asked me to come back to fix a car for them. So I'm heading back over there and uh, it's a Mazda Speed 3, I believe. And uh, I had threw a tune on it, I don't know, six months ago or something. And the owner actually had rewrote a tune on it and the car runs like crap now or something. So I'm gonna end up going there and we're gonna go check out the, uh, we're gonna go check out the uh, car and see if we can get it running. I'm also going to be assembling my cylinder head for my B20 VTEC today. Um, I'd like to get my valves and valve springs and all that stuff assembled and maybe throw the head onto the motor. Um, so we might do that stuff. Um, so yeah. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Hunter tuned in the house. All right. We're working on my cylinder head now for my V20V. Uh, I got the block done in the last episode. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Um, and I'm starting to work on my cylinder head. I got this thing cleaned up pretty good um, in one of the last videos. And I already installed all my exhaust valves and the springs and retainers for the exhaust side. But I still have to do the intake side and I kind of wanted to demonstrate what I'm doing and kind of assemble this head for you guys so you guys can see how to do it and uh, kind of watch me do it as well. So, like I said, I already got the exhaust side done and I'm gonna be doing the intake valves next. Um, a good quick way to check to see if your valves are bent too, because um, it's actually pretty common for these motors to have bent valves, um, you know, from the timing belt jumping or whatever the case may be, um, is you can stand them all in a row like this. This is just a quick, you know, homemade way to check, but you can stand them in a row and kind of look down the, the row with the you know with them all in line like this and you can see that they're all kind of straight none are cocked off to one side or another so that is uh mint so yeah we're gonna install these things into the cylinder head and i'll show you how to do it first you need to take your valve and put it through the valve guide and through the valve seal so it pokes out of the top right here Hopefully you guys can see the lighting kind of sucks right here, but uh, hopefully you get the idea. So yeah, there's one intake valve and we're going to put a second one in as well because we're going to be doing one cylinder at a time. So two valves at a time. Boom. There's that. And we're running blocks, dual valve springs and steel retainers. Uh, the steel retainers that they offer are like more of a budget friendly retainer. It's not like a titanium skunk two or uh, you know, super tech or anything like that, but these should work um, at least for what I'm shooting for. I'm hoping the retainer won't break, but uh, I don't know, we'll find out and we'll send it. So next is just installing the valve springs. So like I said, there's two valve springs inside of this. There's a little guy in the center and then that one goes around the big guy and then the retainer. That just goes on like so. And I also got this tool from eBay. This is a valve spring tool to do B series or H series, I believe, cylinder heads. And I kind of wanted to do a little review on this thing. Uh, it seems like it's working pretty good so far. Uh, you know, you just bolt it onto the cylinder head where the caps would go. So we would just bolt it like so. And then it comes with this little cup right here. And this goes on top of the valve retainer. And then the bolt pushes down on the valve retainer there, or the, the cup, I should say. So you just thread this bolt down onto the cup. like so and tighten that son of a gun down until you can see the valve stem let me grab my flashlight here all right maybe you guys can see a little bit better now so I'm gonna tighten this thing down and that is going to compress the spring down below the valve stem so we can get our retainers installed 
just like so and it sucks because sometimes like the retainer will be offset to one side or another and you can only get one of the keepers installed um, a little trick here to kind of alleviate that is you can take like a pry bar or something in here and move the valve spring over to get the second retainer on uh, that's at least what I do and it works mint so yeah now we're gonna drop this thing down in here I usually use a players grab this guy so I just grab the retainer like so, or the keeper I should say, and just drop it down in there. Give it a push. And I like to uh, put the first one I install on the bottom side of the retainer so it's a little easier to get the second one installed. Like I said, this is kind of where that pry bar thing comes in handy where you can move this around a little bit. to get the keeper where you want it. So I want my keeper right around there. And then we'll grab our second keeper and drop that one down in there. And then we will loosen the tool up. We're all dog pile chicken smile. So yeah, you just got to repeat that 16 times, and then you get your valve springs and valves installed, which uh, I'm not going to bore you guys to death doing this uh, for the whole video, so yeah, I'm just going to get the rest of these installed, and then uh, we'll move on to some other stuff. Alright guys, I'm back, and uh, this thing is pretty much all the valve springs and, spr uh, valves and valve springs are all installed. I'm sorry I didn't really film a whole lot of it. I actually did another video on doing a cylinder head assembly, or at least doing like the valve springs or retainers. Uh, I may put a little card up here for you guys to go check that video out because I feel like I did a little bit more detail on the springs and retainers in that video. But uh, yeah, so next I have, like I said, all the valves and stuff are installed. Yeah, it'll look good. So next I'm gonna be installing like the LMAs, which are like the lost motion assemblies, um, and they go, they go in these slots right here, right in the middle of each valve spring. Um, and they just literally plop right in. They just have like a little plunger on them and it's kind of like a lifter in a way. And uh, yeah, like I said, they just kind of slide right into here. Just like that. So yeah, that's what I'm doing now is just putting the LMAs in. All right guys, I got all the LMAs installed and I got one side of the head, the rockers all installed as well. So when you put the rockers in, you wanna make sure that you have the pins that go through the middle on the uh, small side. So those pins look like this and the pin actually just goes right into there. Like so, this is the VTEC lobe rocker arm and you wanna make sure that goes in and on the exhaust side, you want to make sure when you put these in that the, if you're looking at the head from the exhaust side this way, um, there's actually a rocker that's specified to be on the left side of the VTEC lobe and it has this little pin here and you want to make sure that that pin kind of goes into the little slot here um, on the VTEC lobe. And then this guy right here it also has a pin on it. You want to make sure that's on the right side of the VTEC lobe. So all this goes together just like so. And then the rocker shaft slides through here, or it slides through all three rockers. All right, so I'm going to try to demonstrate here. Like I said, you can put the, uh, the first one in without uh, the other two. So you just be push, you push the shaft through right here. Now that rocker is installed and then you can install the other two. So the VTEC one goes in the middle and then this guy goes on the other side of the VTEC rocker. Hopefully all this stuff makes sense. It's kind of hard for me to explain it, but uh, hopefully you guys get it. So you're gonna slide those in and then push the uh, rocker shaft through. There we are. 
They can be a little stubborn sometimes, but it's not too difficult. Also, when you install this uh, rocker arm or shaft, the shaft here, you want to make sure there's an extra hole on the outside of each of these shafts. And when you slide it all the way through, there's a pin that goes in right here and on the uh, intake side as well. Now on the exhaust side, this little dimple is on the uh, pin and that one is gonna go right here, which corresponds, which corresponds to the, uh, the cam cap. It locks into that little dimple on the pin here. Like I said, I hope some of this stuff makes sense to you guys. Uh, a lot of this cylinder head stuff is kind of complex and it's kind of hard to explain all of it but uh, I'm just doing kind of the basics here and showing you what to look for and whatnot. So yeah, I'm gonna install these last three rocker arms and uh, we'll get the pin installed and then we can move on to some other things. What up? All right, so Michael's filling the kerosene heater right now. And uh, I'm tapping my cylinder head. So when you do a LS VTEC or B20 VTEC, you actually need to take this port right here and tap it to eighth inch pipe thread. So I'm tapping this to eighth inch pipe thread and then I'm installing a plug into this spot right here. Uh, this is on the, I don't even know the v, uh, where the VTEC solenoid is. So this is gonna be the passenger side of the motor uh, and intake side. And that's where the pipe tap goes so uh, yeah we're gonna tap this and then install the plug and then I'm also going to drill out um, the two spots here for dowel pins uh, it's kind of a ghetto way to do it but it saves money and you don't have to buy a damn uh, conversion dowel kit or LSV tech kit you can do this at home so I just plugged the bottom of the head here with an Allen plug I actually stole it from my freaking B20 head over here. They're like in the side of the cylinder head right here. I didn't have any plugs, so I actually stole them out of here. They're the same thing, eighth inch pipe thread. So yeah, Michael's about to uh, put his motor together here. But uh, anyways, I'm going to drill these dowel pins out uh, bigger to 9 16 or 14 millimeter on both sides here on the intake side. That way I can run a normal size dowel um, on my B20 motor. You can buy the step bits uh, dowels, but you know, why? You could just do this. All right guys, so I got some more stuff done. Uh, we actually took a break from my motor for a little while and we worked on Michael's and we got his cylinder head all put onto the engine. We got the timing cover, the motor mount, crank pulley, you know, the belt is on, everything. So this thing's pretty much ready to go. He just has to uh, get a valve cover gasket and get a transmission built. So we have to get a transmission built for Michael's car. Um, he is probably going to be doing like a custom transmission like he might be doing a uh, You know a Y7 first gear and then Z6 or Y8 second third and then Y7 fourth and fifth uh, To kind of help with you know all the turbo power and whatnot But uh, yeah, I uh, haven't really filmed a whole lot today. This is actually the next day now uh, since the last clip um, So yeah, I don't really know where I left off this video has kind of been all over the place whatever um, probably not the longest or most uh, informative video or whatever, but I uh, kind of wanted to show you guys some basics of putting a VTEC head onto a B20 and so, uh, some of the stuff you can do, like drill out the uh, bolt hole for the backside so you can use the uh, factory B20 uh, dowel pins. And then, you know, just the eighth inch plug there on the bottom side so you can run your external um, oil line which is gonna go into this port right here. Um, and then I already got my sandwich plate and stuff coming for that. Um, I just gotta wait for it to get here. Uh, I'm not really in a rush to get this thing done considering I don't even have like a transmission or a clutch or anything like that yet. But uh, yeah. So uh, yeah, I got uh, the alternator brackets on. I got the water pump on. You gotta run a uh, 22 tooth water pump if you wanna run like a 
GSR timing belt, which I'm going to be running a GSR timing belt. So you have to match the water pump to the timing belt. If you use a LS or B20 timing belt or a water pump, you have to use the LS or B20 timing belt as well as the water pump. So whatever timing belt you have, you have to make sure that you match the belt to the water pump. But uh, yeah, so this thing is uh, looking pretty good. Um, like I said, I just got to get some random shit for it yet. I got to put the cams in, put the timing belt on, all that kind of stuff. But I'm going to be doing it that in the next video probably or in the coming days. Uh, I'm not really sure what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. I might be working on a transmission for Michael's car. We might be doing some other things too. Uh, I'm not exactly sure, but I wanted to get a video out for you guys so you guys uh, didn't go nuts and fucking snapchat me and shit and be like hey where's the video where's the video <laughs> but uh yeah i still need a freaking z6 motor because i went to the uh junkyard found a z6 and it ended up having a broken connecting rod and the girdle was all broken so i still need a freaking z6 motor so that's the second or third z6 now that i've looked for for this customer's car and i can't find seem to find a good one to save my life <laughs> so yeah, still got to find a Z6 so we can work on that thing. Still waiting on parts, whatever. But I did actually place an order today with VS Racing. Um, they actually sell turbos just like On3 Performance. I don't think I'm going to be dealing with On3 Performance anymore uh, just because their customer service kind of sucks. And I asked them to work with me and, you know, maybe make me a dealer or something like that so I can kind of distribute their turbos or you know get some discounts on some of their parts because I mean I make videos about on three and it seems to get a good amount of views but uh, I don't know they just seem to uh, not really get back to me and I don't know I just don't really like some of their sales tactics and whatnot so I'm probably not going to be dealing with them guys anymore and I'm going to be dealing with VS racing and we'll see how those turbos are when they get here I heard they're a very similar product to on three but uh, yeah so Anyways, that's a plus VS racing turbos on the way so you guys can be on the lookout for that I got some chip kits coming for a couple ECU's I need to chip So yeah, I'm probably gonna be doing some chipping videos on how to chip a ECU and all that kind of stuff So yeah, whatever. I'm gonna quit rambling now and end the video off uh, Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully some of this little things was helpful and the video wasn't too boring But uh, yeah, so anyways, thanks for watching guys and uh, we will see you in the next video